Hi, I'm Reverend Walker. Today we look at 1 Samuel, the third chapter, verses 1 through 21. And we find after reading that that we have a question. How do we hear from God? How do we hear from God personally and individually? Now, we may never ask a more important question. And I believe that we want to hear from God. We're listening. And what's listening? Listening is wanting to hear. Wanting to hear. And I believe with all my heart that God wants to speak to every one of us. And he's going to speak to us individually. This is the theme of the kingdom of God. And aren't we glad that God speaks to everyone individually? And I trust that you want him to speak to you. And this is the thing that really blesses me. I know God is going to speak to us. Are we listening? God wants to speak to us. And I know that he is going to speak to us. Now, how do I know that? I know you and I, and I know him. In John 10, the scriptures declare, My sheep hear my voice, I call them by name. I lead them out, and they listen. They know my voice. They follow me. We're going to hear, we're going to follow, because we are God's precious sheep, and we know who we are. We're listening because God wants to speak to us, and we're his sheep, and therefore we're going to hear. And therefore, why don't we hear? The scripture tells us in the first place that we don't hear because of sin. Eli, the high priest in our story from 1 Samuel 3, there's a child longing on the altar, wanting to hear from God, yet Eli doesn't hear from God. And they've loved Moses so much, God spoke to Moses. And so when we come to 1 Samuel chapter 3, why can't Eli hear from God? And it's because Eli has sin in his life. He's a high priest, his sons work with him there in the temple. The sons would take the offerings and eat the favorite parts of the offerings, and they were gluttonous. And because Eli didn't restrain his sons, he was an accomplice to sin. And that can happen to anyone. That can happen because sin keeps us from hearing from God. And the psalmist says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Not only will God not hear me, I don't hear God. You see, sin blocks the channel, and when I commit a sin, I can't hear from God, and yet when I confess, that clears the channel, and therefore I can hear from God. As it says in the Bible, let the wicked person return to the Lord and confess, and he will abundantly pardon. When God has forgiven us, then he's going to speak to you and to me. And God wants to do precisely that. Sin, first of all, is a reason why we don't hear from God, even though we want to hear, even though God wants to speak to us. And the second reason we don't hear from God is because of neglect. Once again, in our scripture, it's been 300 years since they'd heard from God, and God's holy place, his altar, has been neglected. And the one child, an altar boy, is waiting there to hear from God. The high priests aren't there, the high priest's son is not there, and all of Israel. God has been neglected. It's the old problem of Mary and Martha. Remember when Martha complained, Lord, ask Mary to help me. She's just sitting there at your feet, and I have all these chores to do. And Jesus says, Mary has chosen the better part, not the only part, the better part. And if we have to choose between being with God or doing something for God, let's spend time with him first. So, how do we hear from God? We hear from God, first of all, when we minister to the Lord. What? Who are we to minister to God? God wants our praise. He wants us to worship him and adore him and love him. The singing, the praise music, a minister for the Lord and Samuel says he's ministering for the Lord so he comes to the church a long time ago and and sings his songs and goes about the ministry responsibilities and that's where he comes to the Lord he hears from the Lord so how do we come to the Lord we minister to the Lord and we seek 
the counsel of wise and mature believers. Samuel, when he heard from God, he went to Eli, and he thought it was Eli that was speaking. And Samuel said, Eli, you called me. And Eli said, no. And the second time, Eli says, no. And the third time, Eli says, go back. And when you hear that voice again, say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. We hear from the Lord when we talk to wise people and ask them, what are you hearing from God? People who know him and they love us know when it sounds consistent and right. We hear from God when we're willing to test the Spirit. First John says, test the Spirit and see if it is from God. And we have to do that. So how do we test the Spirit? We ask ourselves, am I unselfish? Do I have any hidden agendas? Am I honest before God? And then we say, God's in my heart and your heart, and all I want is what you want. Tell me what you want, and that's just perfect. And is my heart surrendered? Our heart is surrendered when we can afford to trust what we hear. And then last of all, is what we hear from God consistent? Is it consistent with the Word of God, that that we're hearing from the Spirit? God won't tell us to do something that's not consistent with His Word. And so, is it consistent with the people of God, to those who know us best, to those who knows God's best? Confirm what we think we're hearing. What do we hear from God? Go, go, this is God's timing, this is God's program. Our church is interested in God's program in the Kingdom of God. And our church is going to follow through with listening to what God has to say to us and moving out into the world. But first, it means a time of hearing from God and listening to God and being God-directed, God-led, and God-fed. Bless you, my brother, sister, in Jesus Christ.